a public meeting, public notice. Uh, <clears throat> notices have been placed in district and additional copies reported to the new graphic and watch the journal sentinel. It's not on the agenda and I'll probably take heat for this, but if everyone would join me in a moment of silence for those who lost their lives. Sweet from Natural World, from the Natural World, was awarded the first place overall instrumental piano, vocal, and digital production in a composition submitted in the middle school division. Each submission was evaluated and received a written critique by a professional Wisconsin composer, educator, or performer. Charlie received a $200 scholarship and the opportunity to present his composition at the May 14th awards ceremony. Charlie's here to play on that mini grand piano. I think Charlie's going to say a few words before he uh, jumps on that piano. Charlie, come on up to the podium. And will you make certain the mic is on? It is. Oh, it is. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so the piece I'm going to play today for you all is called Sweep from the Natural World. I wrote it in three movements. One movement is landscape, one movement is animals, and one movement is plants. So I kind of encompass all of the aspects of nature. And the specific movement I'll be playing today is animals, because it's lively and quick, and it kind of represents different types of animals. So, thank you for having me.
Charlie, you can take the mic there because some board members may have some questions. Uh, first, maybe you should introduce the guest you brought with you. Oh, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about the piece, uh, Charlie, like the time it took to compose that and the types of things that were going through your mind that tied it to nature. Um, so in the beginning, um, we took a trip in September 2020 to Grand Tetons National Park and Glacier National Park. And while I was like hiking things, I just wrote down melodies. And for the suite, I just kind of compiled them. And, and since they're all like trying to depict nature, I felt like they worked really well in like a natural sense. And I wrote this in January. It took me, I think, a month to write down total. And the entire suite is 16 minutes long. And yeah, the other two movements are a little bit longer than that. So um, another thing about it is oh, I started on paper, which I know is kind of uncommon for like nowadays, because people like to start on computers and things. But I find like when you write it down on paper, I don't know, your mind works in a different way. So with that, is that something that you hear in your in your mind first, or is it something that you then you kind of develop or it changes and over time? Like when we write stuff, sometimes we edit. Does it work like that, or is it kind of come to you? Yeah. So I usually start with in my head, and then I go to the piano and I kind of organize it and arrange it in my mind to where I. I think it needs to be, then usually I make a recording and I get myself familiarized with that recording and then usually I start to write it down. And I make changes even when I'm writing it down because sometimes things just don't work like I want them to, so yeah. You're very talented. Do you play other people's music or are you at the point you just like to play your own music? Um, I play other people's as well. I, I like classical music a lot. I've been playing that for a long time and that's uh, a very big aspect that impacts my music, so, yeah. Other instruments, too? Yeah, I play marimba, which is like a xylophone, and I play that for the marching band and a little bit for symphonic band as well, which is a big thing that I'm looking forward to next year, but I'm a freshman, so. Did you take classes to learn how to write music, or? Yeah, so I started I've been composing since I was like eight. I started taking lessons two years ago, I believe, with a composition teacher. And he also teaches like me like music theory, so I can develop my understanding and knowledge of music as well. So, so you mentioned band. Do you like band or orchestra? Um, I don't play in, or in orchestra. I play more in bands. It's so. incredible. For someone who played the piano, you proved my parents wasted their money on my piano. Thank you.
Melissa Rosado, educator at Webster, and Alex Allentini, uh, educator at Webster, have all submitted resignations effective at the end of the year. And Rebecca Lou Timmerman has submitted a retirement for the end of this year. Uh, just as busy with our hiring for next year, so we have a number of contracts for approval. Uh, Tom Sulfur, educator at Parkview, Daniel Wild, educator at Westlawn, Daniel Fay, educator at the high school, Nate Moss, educator at Webster, Melissa Fry, educator at Westlawn, and uh, Josh McHale, educator at CHS, Courtney Smith, educator at Westlawn, and Ann Pagel, educator at Parkview. And then we have two administrative contracts being approved this evening. Um, one is for Kara Amundsen, uh, who will be the new student services director at the district office. And Brittany Kleba will be the Parkview principal. And I'll let our next superintendent, Jerry and Clark, uh, introduce Brittany. Thank you. I'd like to be able to introduce uh, Brittany in just a little bit. Uh, Brittany is currently serving as the assistant principal at both Thorson uh, Elementary School and Parkview Elementary School. Uh, and so she's had that uh, opportunity for the past year, and, and uh, as we went through the interview process uh, and did our reference checks, I mean, came with very glowing remarks. Um, uh, she has really helped build the cultures in those two buildings, um, and we really look forward to being able to work with her. So, Brittany. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so it's nice to see you and the rest of you. I have met you in one time or another, but it's nice to see you. Um, I have had the somewhat unique experience this year of serving as the assistant principal between two buildings, which has given me a wonderful opportunity to learn from two pretty incredible leaders who have influenced me on my leadership journey. Um, and I have very much enjoyed my time getting to know everybody within the district, all of the different relationships that I've built. I, absolutely love all of the students that I get to work with and all the families and community members that I've built relationships with along the way. And I am very excited to um, be selected as the next party principal. So thank you very much. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Approved unanimously. Now it's official welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyone wishing to write the public comment section? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Stand by while I read. They used to say short, but it's not short. That's why. <coughs> Any dis district staff member, district resident, parent, or district student, or student enrolled in the district may comment during the public portion of the meeting per board policy 167.3. For this meeting, the community may address the board during the public comment section of the meeting topics within the legal jurisdiction of the board. Individuals making public comments are not immune for liability and during public comment and can be held liable for defamation or false claims. In the past, the state attorney general issued guidance on how governmental bodies such as school boards should conduct the public comment portion of their meetings. This guidance was given to assist governmental bodies in avoiding violations of state open meetings law. The essence of the open meetings law guidance is unless the topic is brought forward to the board is publicly noticed, no significant discussion can be held on that item. Instead, the topic may be listed on an, as an item on a future meeting agenda whereby discussion could be held. The reason for the Attorney General's guidance is to ensure that all interested parties have equal opportunity and advance notice to participate in the discussion with the full school board. Board policy 0167.3, the board has authority to determine if public comment may be taken and if allowed, on what portion of the agenda comment may be received. Per board policy 144.2, the board will respect the confidentiality of information that is privileged under uh, state laws. This includes, but not limited to, information under current or imminent litigation or student-specific information per board policy 8330. If your item is not listed on today's agenda and you want to have a discussion regarding the topic, you are encouraged to contact the district superintendent and request that your item be listed on a future meeting agenda for public comment. As always, you are also encouraged to contact board members outside the meeting setting with your comments or concerns. 
Please note that the board members are limited to public engagement via email, as noted in board policy 0167.5. Please make your comments to the board and, if, and not to any individuals in the audience, as per board policy 167.3. Each statement made by a participant shall not exceed three minutes in duration. Please note that this is a public meeting. We ask everyone to address one another with the courtesy and respect we would like to receive in return. When you approach the microphone, please state your name and address for the record. Please state the topic you are commenting on. If you are under the age of 18 and are a student at the Cedarburg Schools, please only give your first name. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the district's website. I think that went beyond three minutes. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Hi, I'm uh, Marty Wolf. I live in 1165 Corners Corners Road in the town of Cedar. Um, sincerely, I just wanted to start actually by thanking you board members for doing the job you're doing. Um, to me, this seems like a very difficult job in a very challenging time. And I, I really appreciate you uh, giving of your time and uh, energy to do this. So thank you. Um, I've never addressed the school board meeting before. Um, but what happened yesterday in Texas has compelled me to be here. Um, I, I think we can all agree that protecting our students from life-threatening situations is a top priority, maybe our top priority. And I also acknowledge that no matter what we do, we're not going to be able to do that completely. It, it's, there's just no way. And um, you know, there are evil and sick people in the world who are going to continue to carry out evil acts. But I think the question is, have we done all we should do? Um, I would commend the school board for doing many very good things. Um, several years ago, you restructured your entries, bulletproof glass, Alice, and uh, active shooter training. Fantastic. And, and definitely needed and steps in the right direction. But I think it, it comes back to this question, as I keep looking at my time, have we done all that we should do? And I, and I use the word should, not could, because I think we could always do more, always. And, it, and again, as I said earlier, it would never be enough to completely protect our students. But have we done all we should do? And I would say we should do more. And what I think we should do is put a publicized, a highly publicized, armed presence in our schools. And we could do this one of two ways. Uh, police officers beyond our school resource officer that we have now. Or we could arm our school employees. Uh, many states allow that. Uh, no surprise that Florida has a a uh, program for that, including 132 hours of training in order to be armed in a school. Um, you know, our federal government, unfortunately, with the, the Gun Free School Act and the Gun Free School Zones Act, has made our schools soft targets, if you will. And it, it's time we step up and harden those targets. We can't do this in Wisconsin right now, so I'd encourage you to contact the governor, the legislature, and advocate for this. Um, thank you very much. Two, one, zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Pete Erickson, West 16, North 982, Glenwood Drive. Have any of you ever been in a school shooting? I have. Sure, they were college students, but they all immediately turned into scared children. I hate to say it, but had the shooter not missed his target, that bullet would have went through the window that I was sitting with my back to. I'm disappointed to see that the school board has not voted to formally change policies relating to weapons on campus. I strongly suggest that any mention of 
weapons, ammunition, guns, whatnot, be strictly prohibited on all school grounds for any person except for the SRO. There's no reason for students or community members to have concealed weapons in cases in their cars. What's to stop an angry student from going out to their car during lunch, putting the ammunition in and coming back? These things need to be kept as far from the schools as possible. So I'd like to see the policy committee meet much earlier than they're currently scheduled to to go over that issue. We also have the problem of discrepancies regarding the definition of harassment in school board policy. Unfortunately, the fact that there are several different definitions and qualifications for harassment um, is one of the reasons why there were so many issues with the current court case against the school district. So I also strongly suggest that you need to look over any policy that mentions harassment to make sure that the definitions are the same across the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone? 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 Okay, we'll close the public comment portion. Thank you. Uh, pretty much details the uh, 